Hi, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about um, the distributions now without being given the data. So this is like the theory and how we can fit our data into that nice, beautiful bell curve. You'll see in the packet, I gave everybody one of these. Now you definitely need to print this out or copy it as neat as you can. This is the normal standard deviation bell curve. Now this is universal. This is a very important curve in statistics. The zero is where we would be putting our mean. So here is the mean. Now the numbers along the bottom here, these are those Z scores that we had talked about. And I'm gonna tell you, you don't wanna use this this curve for every problem like to write on. You wanna have it out, but you're gonna to wanna to draw things out as you go. You don't wanna write every problem on this. It would just become too hard to read. So your Z-score, notice here they go up by a half a Z-score. But if we look at the mean and one Z-score above the mean, if I was on a normal curve, if my data was really good solid data, then that would be 19.1 and 15. That would give me 34.1% of my data should be above my mean. And the same is true if I went down a standard deviation. I should have going down 34.1% of my data. Now, if I had really, really super good data, what that does is that gives me, and I'm just going to use my highlighter here, that gives me one, if I talk about my data within one standard deviation of the mean, whoa, let me just, one, my data within one standard deviation of the mean should be 68.2%. So if I have super good data, and this again is universal worldwide, 68 or more precisely 68.2% of all my data should be within one standard deviation of the mean. So let's write that out. 68.2% of all my data should be within one standard deviation of the mean. Now, if you look here, and if we go out two standard deviations, so now if I, so this here would be the mean plus one standard deviation. And if I went from here to here, this would be the mean plus two standard deviations. Now we did this on the homework and the work yesterday. But when, yesterday we were doing it with the actual data. Now we're gonna be doing it with the bell curve and the theory that I have a normal curve. This here would be the mean minus two standard deviations. And if I went one more, notice they give me on this normal curve, plus or minus three standard deviations. And if I don't wanna write out this whole big label, that's when I would use the z-score and I would just say, oh, I'm at three or I'm at negative three. These percents are really, really important. Now, if I were 
to ask you what percent of the data on a normal curve is within two standard deviations of the mean? Well, that would be here. And if I followed this curve around, two standard deviations, you're going to find 95% of your data is going to fall within two standard deviations of the mean. And that's really important. Let's just write that one down. 95% of data should fall within two standard deviations, I'm going to actually use the symbol, within two standard deviations Ah, there you go. Of the mean. This is so, so important. This is called the 90 whoops I can't the 95 percent confidence interval now we're going to see this showing up, it's a really big question on regions exams, the 95% confidence interval. If the data you were given, 95% of it falls within two standard deviations of the mean, you could be 95% confident that you have really, really good data. So this is pretty, pretty important stuff. Now let's look at um, the first page. So it says, example one, for a population that is normally distributed, find the percentage of the population that lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Now notice, look at how I drew it out. I drew myself a little curve, and I have a negative one and a positive one. I only put the Z scores. And according to that bell curve, 68.2% should be within one standard deviation of the mean. Within two standard deviation of the mean, again, there's that 95% confidence interval. It's actually 95.4% of the data if you add up those percents. Now, let's look at Part C. Part C says, you know, you're more than three standard deviations away from the mean. Well, if you're more than three standard deviations away from the mean, if you looked at your curve, only about 1% of your data was above the positive three and 0.1 one, and one was below the negative three. So only 0.2% of your data is more than three standard deviations from the mean. And if you are between one and two standard deviations above the mean, you are in between z-score one and z-score two, your 13.6% of your data. So when they ask you these theory questions, you have to apply that normal curve and you have to read the percent. The same is true with the problem like exercise two. At Arlington High School, 424 juniors re recently took the SAT exam. On the math portion of the exam, the mean score was 540 with the standard deviation of 80. Now, what that means is if you were to draw out this bell curve, here's your mean at 540 at your zero. And you have a standard deviation of 80. So at one, you're at 620, at two, you're at 700. And one standard deviation below, minus 80, you're at 460. And then minus another 80, you're at um, 380. So now they're asking you what percent of math scores fell between 500 and 660? Well, 500 is 40 below 540. And the 660 is 40 above 620. So basically, you are using the half deviation below the mean all the way up to one and a half above the mean. So notice here, to do this problem, 
I would have to add up all the percents that were from a half below to one and a half above. And all of those added up to 62.5%. So if they told me that there were 424 juniors who took this and this range here that I colored in when I drew it was 62.5, you're saying 265 students fell within that range. And you got to round up because we can't have a piece of a person. Now, if Evan scored a 740 on her math exam, what percent of students who took the exam did better than her? So here's the 640. The 640 happened, I mean 740, excuse me. The 740 happened here. 40 above, so at the 2.5. So you're at the 2.5 for the 740. And if you add up, you have the 0.5 and the 0.1. That's really only 0.6%. 0.6% is 0 0.006. Now you get two and a half students, which again, I told you, you can't have a half a person. So roughly three kids did better than Evan in her high school. So. We're using theory now. We're not using the actual data list. Let's take a look at the next problem. Oh, no, before we get to the next problem, we have to talk about the calculator. If you're going to be using Z scores on the calculator, what we do is we use the call, what is called the normal CDF. You get to it by hitting the second key and the variable key, because above that is the distribution. Let's take a look at it here. Turn this on, clear everything out. Here's the second key, and here's the variable distribution key, and the normal CDF is two. Now, if I were going to find uh, the normal CDF using the calculator, I would be doing this. I would be putting in the lower z-score, I would comma, I would have the upper z-score, I would have the mean, and I would have the standard deviation. Two ways you can go with this. You can actually put in the upper and the lower data points, or you could put in the upper and the lower z-scores. Now, we're going to do it both ways so you see what we're talking about. The upper and the lower z-scores you would have to use zero for the mean. Now on the calculator, it, they give you this mu, this is a script U and we call it the mu, and that means the overall population average. The, the X with the bar on top means the average of a sampling of the population. So we use them kind of interchangeably. When you get into statistics further in college, it will become more precise, but for us, the mu and the mean are going to be the same thing. And if you're using the z scores, you have to use zero, like it's on the, the chart, and then you have to say your standard deviations are counting by one. And if you use your data points, if you put in the lower data point and the upper data point, you would put in the actual mean they gave you and the actual standard deviation. Now, I know that sounds a little confusing because we haven't done it yet. So you should absolutely print out this page or write this page in your notes. So now let's see what I'm, I'm talking about. The heights of 16-year-old teenage boys are normally distributed with a mean of 66. So that's important. There's my mean of 66 and a standard deviation of 3. If Jared B is 72 inches tall, which of the following is closest to his percentile? Now, percentile, remember, percentile is everything at or below the data point. So, oops, I left off the G. So if I'm talking a percentile here, what I would do now is I would go into my normal CDF 
and I can use these data points. Um, we have first, we would go with the lower data point. Now, that would be everything below Jarabi. Um, and so that would be negative 999, because we don't know how low it's going to go. And then that would be to the data point of Jaraby 72, so the lower data point to the upper data point. And then we have a mean of 66, and we have a standard deviation of 3. So if we type this in now on the calculator, I had negative 999, because I don't know where I'm stopping. They didn't give me a low end point. They just said percentile, so that means everything lower. And we're going to Jarabee's height, which is 72. And then we have to put in the mean that they gave us and then the standard deviation. Now, on a lot of your calculators, you are going to have to type this in. It gives you a nice list. The newer calculators are nicer. And then you just have to hit calculate. And this gives me 99.7, a 90. Seven, seven. So that rounds to the 98th percentile. So if I'm back to here, so that equals the 98th percentile. And that gives me choice three. Exercise four, the amount of soda in a standard can is normally distributed with a mean of 12 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.6 ounces. If 250 soda cans were pulled by a company to check the volume, how many would be expected to have less than 11.1 ounces? Well, this is just like this. We have to find the percentile of 11.1 ounces because they're getting pulled if they have less. So we, again, are going to typing the normal CDF and we want to be less so that's our lower boundary the upper boundary is 11.1 ounces we have an average of 12 ounces and we have a standard deviation of 0.6 ounce so what is this going to be so Second variable, number two, lower boundary, negative 999, 11.1 .1 would be the upper boundary, 11.1 would be the upper boundary, the average is 12, the mean is 12, and the standard deviation is 0.6 of an ounce. That gives me roughly 6.68 or roughly 6.7%. So 0 0.0668. And that would be the percent. So that would now, you know, equal 6.68%. But now they want to know how many of the 250 soda cans would have to be pulled if this were going on. Well, that means now I am going to take 250 and I'm going to multiply by the 0 0.0668. And let's see what that gives me because now I have to keep this and I'll just multiply by my 250 on my calculator. That means 16.7 or roughly 17 soda cans. So I'm going to not use the equal. I'm going to use the round because I can't pull 0.7 of a can. You know, sometimes you just have to use some common sense. And this is the real world. So this would be 17 cans of soda got pulled. So they didn't give us a data list on these two. We had to use the normal curve. 
Now you get to problem number five, oh, they gave us a data list. Well, if they gave us a data list, now we're, we have to go back to what we did. We have to use our calculator. We can't use the normal curve. So, so, so important. So let's write this down. When given a data list, we do not use the normal curve. We use the data. So take a minute and get all of this typed into your calculator, use the list, and then turn the, start the video again when you have done that. So I used my calculator and I have a standard deviation that is equal to 12, uh, 1.5. I have a mean, and do they give me the mean symbol on here? They might. They give me the summation. Do they give me the mean? No. All right, so I'll just use an X, and I'll put a bar over it. My mean is equal to 12.6. So using that, now let's see. They say determine the mean and the sample standard deviation. Oh, they gave me, I wrote down the population standard deviation. They wanted the sample standard deviation. So that is the S with a subscript. And that equals 1.5 also. Now I'm going to tell you, when your population <clears throat> and your standard deviation and your sample standard deviation are the same, you have some pretty good data going on. All right. So now, uh, part B, why does this sample indicate that the population would be well modeled using the normal distribution? Well, the sample and the population are the same. So when the sample and the population are the same, again, you have really, really good distribution. So you can actually use either one. That's what they're trying to tell us now. Um, I'm not going to type all that. <laughs> uh, so. Use your calculator to sort this data. Okay, so the calculator wanted you to put this data into order. So when you use the list and they told you that 9.8 was your smallest, um, let's just put the data in order now. So now you have 9.8, 10.1, 11.5, 12.6, 11 11.8, 12.3, 12.5, 12.6, 12.8, 13.2, 13.4, and 15.1. All right, so now my data is in order. I don't know why I have an M there. Let's get rid of the M. And let's make this data one long line. There we go. All right, so now here's this data in order. It wasn't in order to begin with. Now, when we used our calculator and we typed this in like I asked you to do, you found that your mean was at 12.6. Uh, and uh, 
they want to know um, if we go one standard deviation of the mean, let's look here. So here's my 12.6. This is the this is the mean that we got from the calculator. And if we add 1.5 to 12.6, we get 14.1. Uh, and 14.1 is going to happen here. So this is one standard deviation above the mean. And if we subtract, we get 11.1, .1, which is right here. So this is the mean minus the standard deviation. So if we want to know how many values this is, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven values fit in this interval of one standard deviation. So if I have eleven values out of how many pieces of data out of sixteen and I type that in on my calculator. 11 divided by 16 I get 68.8% of my data, which is really, really close, really close to the 68.2. So this is roughly 68.8%. And that's really close to the normal curve where it would have been 68.2. Now, if I go to C, it says, assuming your mean of standard distribution from A applied to a normally distributed population of crabs caught in Alaska, what percent will fall between 9.6 and 15.6 pounds? Well, if I go, and, and again, this is where you have no choice. You have to use, you have to use the data. Why did that not go back to the pen? Come on, I want a pen. All right, there we go. All right, so you got to go back to your data. They want you to be from 9.6, which would be back here. Here's where 9.6 would be. All the way up to 15.6, which would be above. Here's the 15.6, this would be bigger. That's 100% of your data. So what they asked us about in part C, this was 100% of our data. This was everything fell between these boundaries that they gave us. And um, so this is actual. Now, if I were to do the theoretical, if I were to be using the, the calculator, so I'm going to actually type this because it's too hard to write with a pen. So the theoretical would be normal CDF. And my low would be 9.6. My upper data point would be 15.6. My mean was 12.6. And my standard deviation is 1.5. So let's type that in and see what happens. So second variable statistics number two, normal CDF, 9.6. 15.6.
Uh, my mean was 12.6, and my standard deviation was 1.5. Theoretically, that's 95.4% of my data. So theoretically, let me just get this up. This is 95.4% of my data. Um, so really, it was better to use the actual data. If a fisherman must throw back any crab below 10.4 pounds, approximately what percent of the crab's quote will need to be thrown back if the weights are normally distributed? So again, if we do actual, anything below 10.4 pounds, one, two. So for actual here, let me just write. We had two out of 16 had to be thrown back. And if we look at that on the calculator, we get 0.125. Or that would be 12.5% of the crabs have to be thrown back. So that would be actual data. Now theoretical, Again, we got to use the normal CDF on the calculator. And again, the lower boundary would be negative 999. And the upper boundary now would be the 10.4. And we had a mean of 12.6 and a standard deviation of 1.5. Oops. And let's see what that gives us on the calculator. And that gives us 7% or 7.1%. So this guy was roughly 0 0.07 or 7%. So actually on the boat, they had to throw back 12% of their catch. Theoretically, this should have only been about 7%, but so now you see sometimes reality doesn't match theory. Um, so tonight, what I'm gonna ask you to do is the finish this packet. Um, now, you can use the, um, the data points like I showed you, and tomorrow I'm actually going to teach you how to calculate a Z score, and then we'll use the normal CDF with the Z scores tomorrow. So, all right, well, good luck with this. And again, let me know, email me if there's any problems.